Hello and welcome back to another haul and it is now the 2nd of May so yeah I will be doing over the mango I got last month for this month yep oh I'm bought you again and I also have a couple of DVDs yep you do anyway this is the mango I got this month we'll be going over that in a minute yep no, I will. So first off, should we start with the DVDs? Of course we should. First up, I got this. I can't actually pronounce it, but yeah. This was rubbish. Not worth maybe talking about. I can't even really describe the plot. But anyway, there's this girl on the front here, who is a girl in the subtitle version and in the original novel. For some reason, when they dubbed it, they decided to make this character to a boy for some reason, but yeah, she's meant to be a girl. Anyway, there is, um, they're in this, like, futuristic world where everyone, like, lived online and they, like, do things. They're all monitored. Everyone's, like, monitored and stuff and by the government. And then there's these children start getting murdered. And they don't know why, so this girl, and the cover here, and this girl, and this girl. These three girls, or four girls, I think so there's four originally, start to like investigate and stuff, and it was just crap. It was only three pound. Yeah. Next up, anyway, I have something that's actually good. And that is the complete series of Maytama on Blu-ray. I've watched Maytama twice, ages ago. I watched it subtitled when it, I, like, one of the first things I watched was this. And then when it got a dub, I watched it again in dub. So yeah, I see, I've seen this twice, but Maytama's good. It's about Mizaki, who goes to a formerly all-boys school. It used to be all-boys, it's now co so... The majority of the students there are still boys, and she becomes the student council president and tries to fix the school, which is kind of a mess. But she comes from a poor family because her dad left and her mother is struggling to, like, pay for her and her sister and stuff. So she also has to have a part-time job to help pay for stuff. So she is also a maid at a maid cafe, but she doesn't want anyone at school who sees her as this like tough student council president to know that she works at a maid cafe but when one day uh, the most popular boy in school I can't find him oh, he's up here Usui finds out about her secret that she works at the maid cafe but he promises to keep it a secret for her so yeah maid time is good I do recommend this if you like Jojo it's a classic Now we can get on to the manga. Yay! First up, I got this off eBay. Somebody was selling it. The complete series. Anyway. I was browsing through eBay, how as I do often. And I came across someone selling the entirety of Sarah's Celestial Legend, volumes 1 to 14, for a decent price. So I thought, I'm interested in that. I've watched the anime a long time ago. But I was always interested in reading the manga. So I added it to my watch list anyway to come back to it at some point. And then I got a message from the seller saying that I could have it for cheap. If I bought it within like 24 hours, she would give me like £10 off. So I just decided to go do that. And so I got the entirety of Sarah's for a deal. Yep. I've read volumes 4 and 4. It's as good as I remember it. Like, it's pretty similar at the minute. Yeah, it's quite an old series. It's you what I say. I am trying to get all her fit stuff. I have Fushigi Yugi. I have Imadoki. I'm looking for Absolute Boyfriend, which is quite easy to find because it's still in print. I've seen that everywhere. And also the sequels to Fushigi Yugi, which are also quite easy to get a hold of. It's just Alice 19th. 
which is another series of hers, that's in English. I can't find the entirety of that one, so I'm still actually looking for that. But anyway, so there's the rest of Legend. Here's volume one. Two. Three. Four. And Ceres is about a girl called Aya and her twin brother Aki. And on their 16th birthday, they ask, go to her grandfather's house to like what she thinks is to celebrate. But once she gets there, she's shown this mummified hand and a power that was sealed inside of her. The power of the celestial maiden Ceres is awakened, and her grandfather tells her that she must die because she's a threat to the Makage family and also her brother is like the, some special who they need so they like take him and she manages to escape and she learning to control her powers as Ceres. This is slightly darker than like her like Fushigi Yugi and Imadoki or other works by you what I say. But it is still very good. It's 11, 12, 13. I think it's a, there's a nipple on this cover. And 14. And yeah, that's the entirety of Sarah's Celestial Legend. I just push this over here, I'll put it in the right order in a minute. When we get onto this other pile here. Yes, we do. First up I have some Yaoi. We'll deal with this first. I have Cast Heaven, which I haven't read yet. I've read most of these, but I haven't read this one yet. It just arrived not that long ago. And this is apparently a very messed up Yaoi, which I'm looking forward to because I like messed up Yaoi. It's about, there's a school and there's a caste system which is determined by playing cards and like they hold, the person who holds like the king card is like in charge of the class and like runs everything and he can do what he wants with the rest of the students and then the person who holds the target card is like the bottom of the pack and like gets like picked on a lot and then one day the king, who's always been the king of the class, suddenly gets the target of the class, so all the class seek revenge on him by going after him, and then one guy, I think he's the new king, says, you can either be my slave, or you can, like, get tormented by the entire class, so he kind of chooses to become this guy's slave. Yeah, I'm looking forward to reading this one. Yes. I have read these next two, which is False Memories, Volume 1 and 2. This is the complete series. It's just two volumes, and this is by the same author as Candy Color Paradox. I love Candy Color Paradox, so I decided to try this series by her, which was only short. And it was also good. False Memories is about these two guys. They knew each other in high school or college. They knew each other and one day he decided he was horny and decided to get it on with his best friend. But after that they kind of separated and went off to college and never saw each other again. But then now they're in work. Like they're working for like different companies but they two companies are working together so they meet up again. And this guy is still resents this guy for what he did. So yeah they're trying to reconcile their relationship. And this is good. Yes. And last of this is a shonen eye. This is our dining table, which is a very wholesome shonen eye about this guy here. Who he doesn't like eating with other people, he likes to eat by himself. And one day in the park he comes across these two brothers and the little one asks him for some of his his rice balls. So he gives them some and since then the older brother asks him to come round to help they learn how to make the rice balls and he ends up like going round and eating with them every day. And it's just very good this. And I can actually open this one because there's nothing in it. 
nothing dirty in this one at all. It's very good. Yes. Next up, I could not open this one at all. Now, as fire in his fingertips, a burly fireman lavishes me with his smouldering gaze. This is hentai. Basically, this is shoujo hentai. There is a name for this genre, like shoujo hentai stuff. I know there's a name for the genre, but I can't actually remember what it is, but I know that is quite a lot of it digitally. I think this is one of the only physical ones, though. But yeah, it's about a girl who is friends with this fireman. One day her apartment catches fire, he saves her, and then they basically spend every chapter having sex. That is basically the plot of this. There's basically no plot to it. It's just sex. Which is fine. I will have to try and remember the name of that genre though. I know Renta and Manga, the website, has a lot of it on there. Oh, I'll have to just go check on it. Next I have A Girl From The Other Side, Volume 8, which continues on from the cliffhanger at the end of Volume 7, and this is still a very good series, still continues to be mysterious, and yep, this ends on another cliffhanger, like, like Volume 9 is not out for a while, but yeah, A Girl From The Other Side is always good. It's about Shiva, who is like a, I think, five or six year old girl who finds herself on the outside, which is a place ruled by these black creatures. And she meets up with this one, who she calls Teacher, and she's been like living with him on the outside, but she doesn't know why she ended up on the outside. She was placed there one day. No, anyway, it's her and Teacher's life together on the outside with. A lot of mysterious shit in between and stuff going down. And I still have no idea what the creatures in the lake and their mother have to do with what they're doing. Yeah, it's still very mysterious. And next up, I have Kemisar Kiss Volume 17. Still continuing to get this. This is the last volume in the past arc, which is where the OVA ends. So, as past this volume, we'll be into new content. Although the past arc is a lot longer in the manga than what I remember it being in the four episode OVA. We are going to continue to collect the series until I finally finish it, which I try to do this year. Volume 17, that's 25 in total. I have volume 25. So, yeah. Not that many more left to go, less than 10. I'm getting there with this. Yep, you are. Snow White with the Red Hair, Volume 6. This just came out. Yeah, continuing from Volume 5. We're not past where the anime ended yet, but I think we're soon to be past where the anime ended. Yeah, probably. Anyway, it's about Shiryuki, who is has like bright red hair, so the prince of Tambourine, Raj wants her as a concubine, but she doesn't want to be his concubine, so she runs away to the kingdom of Kreness, which is the neighbouring kingdom, where she ends up meeting Prince Zen, the second prince, and like joining him in the palace and becoming like a court herbalist and working in his palace. Yeah, this is a good fantasy shoujo. I would recommend it. Yes. Next up, I have something. Author of our, our ride. What was that? Nothing. And this is Love Me, Love Me Not. I recognise that name. No, you don't. Hmm, it's all very familiar. And Love Me, Love Me Not is the new series just being released by. Right. Owl, I think that's pronounced Saki Saka. And it's about these two girls who are living in the same building, like they've just started high school and this girl, Akari, has just moved into the building where this girl lives, I can't remember her name at all, Yuna, 
Oh yeah, they meet up and they instantly become friends, even though they're quite opposite. So, and they both just become friends and start going to high school together, and then she meets her brother and starts like liking her brother, and then there's her childhood friends living there as well. Yeah, it's kind of on the same sort of genre of our whole ride. But just your high school show, just series. So far, it's good. I enjoyed it. Why did you mention our whole ride whilst talking about this? Was it the same author? My God, that's disgusting. I can't let you have that then. Okay. Let's try to make it so she didn't find out as well. Anyway, we have Astro in Space Volume One. I watched the anime of Astro Austin Space a bit ago and I really enjoy it so I decided to pick up the manga as it's only five volumes on and I currently only have volume one but it was very good, same as the anime so yeah, Astro Austin Space volume one. It's about these group of kids, I think there's, if I can remember, a bunch of them, I can't remember the exact number. They are going on their school trip to another planet, because this is in the future, and they take school trips to other planets. And they're going on a school trip to another planet, and once they get there, this big black ball of nothingness opens up and sucks them into space. And then they are trapped in space until they find the spaceship. So they get aboard this spaceship, and now they have to make their way back home by jumping from right planet to planet to planet. And, like... Each volume, they're on a different planet. So yeah, there's also a mystery in here as well about stuff and who done it, and it's very good, and I recommend this. Yes. Next up, I have a right novel set of the end. Go on each no say resurrection at nineteen, volume two. This is the continuation of catastrophe at sixteen, and also. This then reads on to the manga. It's about Goran, again, because it's in the title. Yeah, this is a different artist than what does the rest of the stuff. This is the same artist that does the manga adaptation of Catastrophe at 16. Anyway, yeah, it's Goran. I can't really explain the plot to this if you have not read the manga or Catastrophe at 16 because it will be spoiling some stuff. But this takes place after the end of the world. Because Catastrophe at 16 took place before the end of the world. So yeah, and how the world ended, that's a spoiler, so read it if you want to know. Yeah. So as it were, Black Volume 4. This volume focuses mainly on diabetes and the complications from diabetes and this continues to be very good I think I prefer this over the original cells of work it's darker it's like more at stake and it's just more interesting so this has just had an announcement that it's getting an anime so that's very good oh yeah this is cells at work inside of the body of someone who is unhealthy. Yeah, if you like the original Sounds at Work, I would recommend it. Or, so I recommend it if you haven't read the original, because this is better than the original. And I can't keep a hold of it for some reason. Yes, you can't. Next I have Made in Abyss, Volume 8. And this is the backstory volume to the Village of Hollows and how they were created, and it's messed up. It's super messed up, like Made in Abyss is messed up at times, which I what I really like because I like messed up stuff and find it interesting. So yeah, this was an interesting volume. This most of this entire volume was the backstory of the horror village and this girl and these people here. Yeah, very interesting volume. But the whole village isn't my favourite arc, but I think it's coming to an end soon. But yeah, this volume was certainly interesting. 
like Made in Abyss is about, if you don't know, Rico, who one day finds this robot boy Reg in her place, where there's a giant abyss in the middle of this island, which leads down to where nobody knows. Like, and Rico wants to travel into the abyss to find her mother, who went down there as a cave raider. So she's trying to get up the ranks as a cave raider, go down to the abyss. And then one day she finds Reg, who is this, like, robot boy, and she he wants to know where he came from. Was he originated from the abyss, so the two of them decide to go on a journey down to the bottom of the abyss together. It's good. Yes, I suppose. Next up, I have Room in Room Matsunaga-san Volume 2. This is a shoujo about a boarding house and this girl who moves into a boarding house with because her parents are looking after her grandmother, I think. So she moves into this boarding house with this bunch of people. These lot here, including Matsunaga-san, who is like eight years older than her, I think. But she starts to like Matsunaga-san and eats a bunch of spaghetti and yeah, this is good. Finally getting a physical release after being digital only for so long. Anyway, next up I have Sweat and Soap Volume 2. Two. Now, in my last time I hauled this, I mistakenly called this a Jose. This is actually a Seinen. I did look it up because I had some suspicions and I looked it up and I was right. This is a Seinen. Anyway, this is about a girl who constantly sweats and she starts working for this company that makes. How's my bookcase wet? And she starts working for this company that makes soap, like her favourite brands of soap, and this guy comes up with the ideas and kind of designs the soap, and she's in the company and the finance department, and then this guy sees her working at her, his soap in the lobby one day and comes over and set, smells her, saying she smells very nice, so he asks her if he can come and smell her every day to come up with like, inspiration for his soaps. So she agrees, and he starts marrying her, then they start going out, and... <coughs> yeah, this is God. I do enjoy it. You certainly do. Anyway, next up is another Seinen series. And that is a one I haven't read yet. Oh, nice. This is my Dress Up Darling. Volume 1. Apparently it has explicit content. This, I try to find a page that doesn't because she gets her boobs out in this quite often. This is a, by Square Enix Manga, it is a series about this girl who's a cosplayer and then she meets this guy who she kind of ropes into becoming her cosplay assistant, I think. And, or to partner or something. I haven't read it yet. I don't know that much. I just know that it's about cosplay. <laughs> yeah, she's in a knickers on that page that I can't really show that. But yeah, I understand why this is mature. She, this girl's constantly in her knickers. Yeah. So yeah, I can't say much more about this as I haven't read it. I picked it up because it was about cosplay and it sounded interesting. Yep, I haven't read this one either but I do know more about it. This is Perfect World, Volume 1. This was another digital only title for such a long time. That's finally coming out in print. And this is about a girl who knew, these two knew each other in high school and he was like on sports teams and stuff. But they kind of got out of touch after high school. And one day she meets him again but he is now in a wheelchair. After being in an accident, I think it was a biking accident, and now he's confined to a wheelchair, and the two meet again after high school, but she always had a crush on him in high school, but, and now she decides to, like, get with, try and get with him and understand his situation. I'm yet to read this one, but I thought it sounded good, and also it was, like, one of the top digital first Jojo I think. 
Yeah, I'll be looking forward to reading this. Yeah. Last in this haul is a manga that I just happened to come across whilst browsing, I think, Godreads. I was adding stuff to Godreads and I think I came across it there. And this is a one-shot comedy manga called My Father is a Unicorn. Oh, how nice. And this is about a boy whose mother gets remarried to a horse. And now his stepfather is a unicorn. And now he has to... His mother's gone away for, like, business or something. So now he's left home alone with his unicorn stepfather. And he's, like, trying to teach his unicorn stepfather how to be a good father. And it, I just thought it sounded funny. I have yet to read it, though. But there's some, like... One point in here, I was looking through it and... The unicorn was like trying to do the cooking. So yeah. I'll be looking forward to reading this one. Yes. You will. And that is up for this all. Yep, that's it for this all. Where's it gone? Anyway, I will see you next video when I make one. Yep, you will. And bye. And bye. Bye bye. I will always retake that manga if it's the last thing I do. Anyway, bye. Bye.